Brook Laddie is one of my favorite distilleries in the world. And in front of me, I have four samples of their most recent peated expressions from the year 2022. Which one is my favorite in this lineup? Well, let's find out. Hey guys, welcome back to Whiskey on the West Coast. My name is Matt, and this is the second part of my Brook Laddie Distillery first impression sessions. The first part was covering the unpeated newest releases from the Brook Laddie Distillery from the 2022 releases that just hit my market. I was uh, taking part in a uh, virtual tasting this evening, and uh, we had eight different whiskeys from the Brook Laddie Distillery that were on offer from Kensington Wine Market in Calgary. So in front of me here, in this second part, I have the peated whiskeys from that range, including the newest Port Charlotte, the SC01, so turns cask. I got the newest Octomore releases too, 13.1 Scottish barley, 13.2 Oloroso sherry cask, full maturation, not just finish, full maturation. And then the 13.3, which the 0.3s always traditionally are the Isla barleys, except for this one has a bit of wine finishing in it as well. Let's get to these whiskeys and find out which ones I think are the best. I'll rank them th one through four, and I'll tell you what one I would probably spend my own hard-earned money on. So let's start right at the front here with the Port Charlotte. So much like the MC01 over here, um, it's part of this uh, expressions range. It's a special release at cast strength of different Port Charlotte range uh, whiskeys just with different cask uh, maturations. This one was a Marsala cask finish. Um, the one that was released this year is a Sauternes cask finish. Now, a little bit about that, it's 55.2% alcohol, 40 uh, phenol peats part, uh, peat parts per million, um, non-chill filtered, natural color, uh, just like everything Brook Lydie does. And it is actually uh, an interesting cask a recipe because before they put it into Sauternes cask, they had it in American whiskey barrels, uh, mainly um, those were, I believe, uh, either bourbon or just American whiskey from Tennessee. Um, and they were recast at different points into uh, Sauternes wine casks. Um, so really interesting. Uh, in my experience, Sauternes and peat go really, really well together. On the nose, this is just like cold smoked salmon, like slow, slow, cold smoked salmon. I have a lot of experience with smoked salmon. Being a fisherman on the West Coast here, I salmon to fish two, three months of the year. And oh man, it's, it's, it's distinctive. Like maple smoked bacon, barbecue, it's just, it's a beautiful, beautiful nose. Um, I gotta take a sip right away. Hmm. Like barbecue steak char at smoked salmon again. Some sweet vanilla, like vanilla pudding, leather, some ash, cracked pepper. It's earthy but it is fully enjoyable. Um, the finish is billowing, it's long. There's even a bit of chocolate in there too. This is really, really nice. And it doesn't overdo it with the, uh, the wine finish. A lot of wine finishes can um, kind of overplay their cards. In this case, because it was recast from um, other casts that weren't quite as sweet into this, it actually works really well. It's a, it's it's really well balanced in that way, not overpowering at all with the wine casks. Let's move on to some Octomore here. So this is the Octomore thirteen point one. This is the Scottish barley. It's fifty nine point two percent alcohol, and is coming in at a whopping one hundred and thirty seven point three uh, phenol parts per million of peat, non chill filtered, natural color. Again, one hundred percent. Scottish barley and this one is just the classic point one um, makeup so entirely ex bourbon and um, American Tennessee whiskey casks American oak this is profiling very classic Octomore just like I believe I pulled up yeah the 9.1 right here very classic point one profile 
So obviously that smoke is there. First thing you notice with Octomore is the smoke, but there's that citrus note. There's a little bit of lactic laddie note in there too. That's coming through. So like lemon lime yogurt. Some peat, once again. The peat is not as big as you would imagine with a number like 137.3. Um, and I always find that with the Octomores, they come up with these big numbers. And I think because of the shape of the stills, how they're so uh, tall and narrow and how fine the cuts are, because they're really narrow cuts with these Octomore bottlings, it makes for a really clean uh, distillate that comes out the other side. And it, they just don't get far enough, I think, into the feints um, to really pull a lot of those, those uh, smoky and dirty notes that they otherwise would when uh, dealing with barley that's 137.3 ppm um just a theory i'm no scientist here but oh man this nose is really good sweet and clean um again you get that x classic x bourbon notes you get some um salted caramel on the nose too super pleasant all right let's let's try this palette mmm Super viscous, super oily, big, big blast of peat. Um, some pepper, lime, lemon, leather, cigar, cigar tobacco. Fruity and clean finish, as clean as something this peated is gonna be. Um, it's almost like, um, there's, there's definitely a bit of a mezcal note in there too, it's just, that's classic Octomore. That is classic Octomore. Um, again, beautiful smoke on the finish. Hell of a long finish, of course, with this whiskey. It just, the finish can go on for three or four minutes with, with a 0.1. And that's what it's basically doing for me right now, uh, as it usually would. Yeah, love these 0.1s. Let's try this 0.2. So this is... The Octomore 13.2 Oloroso Sherry Cask Maturation it is a full Oloroso Sherry Cask Maturation. 58.3% uh, alcohol. It's 137.3 phenol parts per million uh, with the peat. I won't even say about chill filtering and color because we all know it's natural and not chill filtered. Oh, I guess I just said it. I will also say that these Octomores, they're all five years old. It's the best five-year-old whiskey you're gonna find. This is slathered in sherry. No doubt it's a full uh, five-year Oloroso sherry maturation. It's caramel, it's raisin, it's oh, fig jam or spread. Berries, there's like a Maybe like a tawny, a tawny port sort of thing going on there. There's a lot of wine. A bit of like a, a rubbery note too, some funk. And maybe like a, a savory soy sauce note too. Mm. I'm really digging this nose. Mm. Sweet maple smoked bacon. There's some nuttiness, like some pistachio, weirdly enough. But nuttiness definitely coming from that Oloroso sherry, tobacco. There's like a coal note, like a... It's almost like it's like a coal-fired um, furnace or something like that. Um, yeah, there's something dirty in there, something really dirty in there, which is interesting. I'm guessing that's coming, maybe it's earthiness coming from that Oloroso Sherry cask. Uh, on the finish, rubber, um, like burnt steak ends, like just the outside of the steak. Um, and a fireworks note, which to me, fireworks, gunpowder, or matchstick, um, that's indicative of a bit of sulfur. I can be a bit sulfur blind. Um, it's just not something I instinctively pick up. I'm certainly not sensitive to it, but I'm picking up a fireworks um, note, which to me, again, points to sulfur. And I will say on my second, third, fourth, fifth sips of this whiskey, I didn't pick it up, but my first sip, 
I got a very strong, um, like hard boiled egg note. Um, yeah, it was a bit, it was a bit much. Um, in the first maybe two seconds of my sip, I was like, oh, that is not good. That was definitely sulfur. Um, so if you're sensitive to sulfur, stay well clear of the Octomore 13.2. It's just not for you. For me, I still enjoy it. It's, um, it was only that first sip. And I wonder with a bottle open, how that would develop if it would kind of write itself. I'd be willing to try, that's for sure, because the palette, once you get past it, is really good. Um, and the finish, I'm enjoying it. But yeah, watch out. All right, last and maybe least, we got the Octomore 13.3, the Isla Barley. Um, Isla Barley's are usually my favorites in the Octomore line. Uh, they, I just find them very viscous and oily, just a lot of interesting notes on them. And uh, this one is cast a little bit different. Most of the time they've been uh, fairly straight shooters with the casks and still being largely ex-bourbon or ex-American whiskey casks. Uh, in this one, they've incorporated um, ex uh, second fill, uh, ex Reeve Salt and Ribera, uh, Ribera del Duro uh, wine casks. So ex French wine casks, ex Spanish wine casks into the 13.3. Again, five years old, 58.3% alcohol. And it is 137.3 uh, phenol parts per million. No, I'm going to double check that because... No, I'm sorry. I got that wrong. 129.3 uh, phenol parts per million. And it's 61.1% alcohol. My mistake. On the nose. Yeah, this one's profiling a little bit more Laddie Lake. Kind of like a, a cheesecake vibe going on. Yeah, lemon cheesecake, some some tartness in the nose. And some light savory spice, some salts, some salinity, which is nice. I always love a little bit of a coastal vibe there. Some minerality. Maybe a little bit of pineapple too. There's some fruit there. I haven't I haven't quite picked it out. Again, usually you'd have an entire bottle of whiskey to become familiar with here. These are just uh, first impressions. All right, let's 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 check out this palette. You'll notice I didn't mention smoke on the nose. That's probably because at this point I'm going a little bit peat blind. All these are heavily, heavily peated, very smoky whiskeys. At this point, I'm picking up more on the palate than the nose. Uh, I should have probably used my coffee grounds I got here. That said, big blast of peat smoke. Had that on the last one too. Some sweet wine, um, European uh, oak spice. So there's, there's just like that sort of um, nice, almost like dessert spicing, some more like cinnamon than something that's savory. Honey and malt, a bit of a, like an industrial note, which is interesting. There's quite a bit more pepper on this than the other ones. Again, Pete's nice, the finish is long. All Octomores, I find the finish real long. Um, funny enough, point threes are usually the most oily and viscous for me. And in this case, um, this actually feels thinner than the other two, um, which I'm surprised by. All right, let's get to the moment of truth here. What are my favorites? How would I rank these? In this case, I'm gonna have to rank the Octomore 13.2 as the fourth place whiskey, which I've been going back and forth on the 13.3 and the 13.2 as the fourth place. I think I'm gonna put it as a fourth place just because it has the, the, it doesn't have the broadest appeal because of those sulfur notes in the cask. For me, I can get past them, but others probably couldn't. I know others on the virtual tasting, there were some that really didn't get along with it. Um, so for that reason, the 13.2, the Oloroso Sherry, is my fourth place whiskey uh, out of these four. Octomore 13.3, as an upset here, is my number three whiskey. Um, I can see a lot of potential here. Uh, there's a lot of room for uh, development as a bottle opens up, you drink it past the shoulders, 
see what happens, how it changes. Uh, 13.3 is definitely a candidate for getting better than this first impression is. But it just, again, it was thinner than I'm uh, used to with the 0.3s, and it, it just didn't do a whole lot for me. And it, did, it didn't kind of satisfy that classic Octomore profile. And it also didn't really bring something like super intriguing and interesting as a new thing. For that re for those reasons, it's it's number three in the list. Number two, and uh, this is a big upset. Number two is going to be the Octomore thirteen point one. Yes, Octomore does not win this lineup, um, and that's just a simple case that the thirteen point one. It's classic Octomore profile. It's really enjoyable, a long finish, um, but it just could not compete with how lovely this Port Charlotte. SC01 Soterns cask is. It is very well balanced uh, between the finishing and Soterns and uh, and what it was originally matured in. It's just, I can't stay away from it. I want to drink so much of it. And for a price point comparison, it is much cheaper, almost half the price of uh, the other Octomores here. So if there's one I'm going to purchase, it's going to be the Port Charlotte SC01. I might wind up with an Octomore at some point too because I have trouble resisting them. They're some of my favorite whiskeys. But the Port Charlotte SC01 is just a knockout. If you can, grab a bottle. I don't... <sighs> if you love peat, you love sweet peat, um, but you like it to be a little bit more balanced, you like those savory notes, you like that barbecue smoke, yeah, Port Charlotte SC01 has it all. So Port Charlotte SC01 is the winner of this range. Uh, thank you for joining me once again here, guys. Uh, it's been fun. I always love doing these virtual tastings, and I just wanted to bring you some first uh, thoughts and first impressions on these, and maybe help you with any purchases you're considering of the Brook Lottie range. There is no real wrong choice here. They're all winners. Uh, but for me tonight, the Port Charlotte SEO one was the big winner. If you like the peated ranges of Brook Lottie, let me know uh, down below what is your favorite uh, of the Port Charlotte and or Octomore lines. And if you're gonna buy one of these, or if you have bought one, also comment down below what one you purchased. Thanks again for stopping in. Uh, if you can go ahead and like, share, subscribe if you haven't already, I really appreciate it. Thanks for joining me on Whiskey on the West Coast, and I hope you come back for more. Sláinte.